Welcome to episode 126 of the Guardian One podcast. We record live Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I'm joined by Jez. Do we got anything to talk about tonight? Agrios. Greetings, Guardians. Sharks. Oh my gosh. Leaks, ornaments, and guests. Gray. Big plays, big plays. And Guardian One PvP badass Connor. Oh, dude, don't don't put that evil on me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about all things Destiny, but first, housekeeping. Hello, Guardians. Thank you for listening to the podcast, however it is that you are choosing to listen. Be sure to follow Guardian One on Twitter at G1Net. That's G the number one N E T. In addition, be sure to check out the Guardian One website at GuardianOne.net. If you want to send us an email, you can send it to feedback at guardian1.net. We also have a Bungie.net forums group. We utilize the forums for both comments and feedback, so be sure to join the conversations going on there. Big thank you to all those currently in the Twitch chat. As Remy said at the top of the podcast, you can watch the show live at twitch.tv slash guardian1network. We broadcast every Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. If you can't catch the live show, you can always find the podcast on iTunes, as well as upload it to the Guardian 1 YouTube channel at youtube.com slash guardian1network. Guardian One is a proud member of the Guardian Radio Network, so be sure to check out the Guardian Radio Network website at theguardiansofdestiny.com. There you'll find all of the different podcasts as part of the network, including the flagship podcast, Guardian Radio. They broadcast every Monday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, on twitch.tv slash guardianradio. You can also follow their Twitter account, at Guardians of D, and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guardiansofd. Other podcasts that are part of the Guardian Radio Network include Ghost and Echoes, a podcast that contains a bit of fanfiction and audio versions of the Grimoire cards, as well as the Destiny lore-focused podcast called Focus Fire Chat. Once again, thanks for joining us on the podcast. I'll see you again next week. All right, thank you very much, Hollow River. Lots to get to today, uh, but first uh, we have Connor, Connie the Commie from Guardian One. Uh, Welcome to the Guardian One podcast, Connor. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so you say, uh, do not put that evil on you. And I feel like if you didn't want that to be part of your shtick, why are you so good at PvP? <laughs> <laughs> good question. I don't want to disappoint the viewers. That's all. Oh, man. Well, I tell you what. If anyone uh, in this group is not disappointing in PvP, it is you. Um, I... I have not seen your prowess um, tested. I have not seen you struggle, uh, but I have heard tales, tales and tales of your greatness in PvP. And so I get it. I understand. You don't want to let people down. But as, as far as I can tell, you don't let people down. Um, I draw this conclusion from the fact that you hang out in the Lighthouse Kittens. Um, where was that, Gray? Oh, you didn't expect me to call you so early. I see you. Oh, no, I got papers. <laughs> what was your question, Remy? What is uh, Lighthouse like, Kittens? Yeah, Lighthouse Kittens. Um, yeah, it's it's super awesome. So if if you are part of the, uh, the Crucible Radio Slack, which I would encourage anybody who wants to get better at their PvP skills, uh, meet people who are willing to, to help you, and in turn share what you learn with other Guardians who might not be quite as good as even you are, uh, the Crucible Radio Slack is kind of like the Guardian 1 uh, for, for Crucible, for PvP. Great group of people. They're all focused on helping one another get better at that, keeping the salt as low as possible, keeping their frustrations kind of where you know in check where they're supposed to be and just having a good time that's actually how i met met connor i was accepted into that that slack and and started playing with a bunch of really cool people uh trying to get my skills better at pvp and it certainly helped and lighthouse kittens is just one of the sub channels in there that uh you can go into and if you're a very skilled player you can help people get to the lighthouse who have never been there before and if you're a not-so-good player, you can post there and say, hey, look, I've never been to the lighthouse. Is there anybody out there 
uh, who's willing to help me get there. And people like Connor and, and his friends who are very skilled at PvP, they routinely hang out in that Slack channel and look for people who have never been to the lighthouse and take them on their first runs. If you go to his Twitch channel, you can see a bunch of archived runs that Connor has done. Um, and as you follow it uh, moving forward, you'll see him taking people to the lighthouse and getting to share the joy of that experience for the first time. Now, that that is badass, Connor. What would you say? How many people would you say that you've got there? What is your ratio of uh, success? Uh, honestly, it depends on the map and just how I'm playing during the weekend. But I like... I like to keep it at around 50%. Definitely not as high as a lot of other, like the top streamers that are super popular. But in general, I think if you can get a warm up card, kind of feel for, get a feel for how um, the person you're trying to help plays and then play with that person, maybe you take an early loss or something or face a tough team on the first card, but then you go back, reset, and kind of adjust to how you guys need to play and work as a team and then you come back for that second card and hopefully get it there that's really cool um that's a really that's a really great idea um do you have uh we had um spanky on the show uh you know months ago and he is the person who got me to the lighthouse on both systems uh and it was a lot of fun and it's it is really interesting playing with somebody who's really good at PvP. Like me, myself, and I, I carry a a, <clears throat> a one a one a one plus um, KD basically everywhere I go. Like I'm I'm very picky about my engagements, and if I feel overwhelmed, I'll fall back and try and find a better angle. Um, so my my KD does not reflect my actual ability in playing. It just reflects my ability to realize when i'm underwater and uh back up <clears throat> so i'm curious to know if you have any uh if you have any tips for people out there um who either want to do what you're doing like in case there's anyone out there listening who is interested in helping out you know lighthouse kittens like what a great what a great thing you know like if we were talking about who's going to heaven based on their helping other people out in destiny you've got like front row seats you know you <laughs> were in that front cart on the roller coaster because that's really cool um so would you have any uh, any advice for people who want to start helping others uh, any advice for people who just want to be uh, better at pvp um anything like this do you have any gems to share with our listeners uh, in terms of just general PvP improvement, um, a lot of people, I don't do this myself just because I can um, kind of see what happened right after it happened. But in general, if you record your gameplay and go back and see in games where you had success what you're doing and also in games where you struggled and also notice what you're doing, if you're taking engagements while you're weak or maybe not priming with a grenade, stuff like that. Um, kind of re-watching your gameplay and trying to figure out what is causing you trouble. Um, right now, with the way the special ammo economy is, if you're not running um, a weapon that kind of circumvents that uh, the changes that have been made, so like an icebreaker, sidearm, no land, um, in general, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage if you're not using um, some of those weapons. So uh, generally... You want to play to the strengths of what's going on in the current PvP climate. Um, and right now it is weapons that allow you to have special up at all times. Uh, that sounds really good. That sounds like really good um, advice. I'm curious to know, okay, so my my biggest weakness, other than not just having you know the thumb skill of a 21-year-old, um, I will get stuck in a I will get stuck in this loop where I will switch my weapons like I will run out of primary and I'm still facing a foe who is absolute and as am I and I switch to my second weapon and then for some reason I switch back to the first weapon and I cannot get out of this loop. It doesn't happen often because like I said I'm very careful about my engagements um, but I just can't I can't trust the secondary even though I almost always run, um a sidearm or at least or at least i have it before they changed the special economy economy as it is um 
what do I do? How do I get out of this? Like, how do I trust my secondary? I think you just have to use it more. Um, the sidearm is the perfect weapon to finish someone off. If you open up an engagement with a pulse rifle, maybe and miss enough shots or something, you can try and close the gap with the sidearm, uh, but you do have to be aware of the other person is probably going to have that same idea. They're probably going to be using a sidearm as well, just based on um, how the weapons are right now. And so it's you kind of have to expect or try and at least predict what your opponent is going to do. Um, and what do you think your opponent is going to do? Uh, uh, obviously, it's a case-by-case -case basis, but if I have someone weak, I'm always looking to take advantage of that person because they're more than likely going to try and step back and retreat, get out of the engagement. If, they're, if they know what's good for them, they're going to try and run and... Usually you can catch them off guard if they do or with a sidearm, especially if they're around cover If you take an aerial approach or slide around the corner wherever they're at and try and be Unpredictable be where they do not expect you to be especially with a sidearm. It gives you great um, Aerial ability so you can close distances while you're in there, which um, You don't really have the ability to do with most primaries and basically now all special weapons, seeing as you either don't have special ammo, uh, fusion rifle probably doesn't have ammo, and the shotgun, if you do have ammo, has been kind of nerfed for the aerial accuracy. Interesting. Um, I like that, and I will I will think about that. I, I have taken quite a few of my videos and gone back and watched them to, to see where I could go better uh, with certain things. I just... I don't know. I don't know how many times I have to watch it before I figure <laughs> out what I should have done better. But most of the time, it's just I should have I should have run away and and resettled myself uh, because sometimes I'm I'm out in the open uh, once they've gained ground. Uh, thank you for those um, tidbits. I'm going to ask you a couple questions and then I'm gonna throw it to these panelists and uh, sh chat if you have any questions for Connor. Um, specifically PvP. Um, do you do PvE, Connor? Are you interested in PvE? Absolutely, yeah. We've been doing... Um, I've been doing raids with the G1 groups um, this past week on the PlayStation, kind of getting my light up, but I really do enjoy the raids. I don't have the patience to Sherpa people through raids, that's for sure, but um, I do enjoy the raids, and I do enjoy playing with everyone, and I like the pressure, especially on, uh, I think... Uh, Wrath of the Machine is probably my favorite raid just because of how heavily it involves your team and the communication between your team or team and just the access phase two is I think a really fun boss fight so yeah definitely PvE as well but PvP is my forte very cool um, I just um, I just know some people who are you know very PVE or very PVP and uh, not too, not too many who are super good at one are super interested in the other so that's really cool to hear um, because they really are two different things they really are two different things uh, Bungie has made has done a really good job at making it seamless you know I'm carrying my character over into this other arena um, excellent. I'm curious to know where video games started for you, Connor. Like, what was the first? What was the first video game you played? And you're like, man, I want to do this all the time. So uh, it's funny. I have uh, stories from my parents. So I grew up on the Nintendo 64. So Super Mario World 64 and um, Mario Kart. So I've always been super competitive. They tell me stories <laughs> about how they would be in front of the race and I would be holding a shell, a red shell or a green shell. <laughs> and they'd be like, no, don't show me, don't show me. And I would always tell them, oh, yeah, no problem. You're good, you're good. And then they get hit with the shell 10 seconds later and I'd start cracking up just because I released that shell and now I was in first place. So... On Nintendo is where I started and then um, stayed with Nintendo, kind of got, I was into Pokemon a lot, but the first exposure to a shooter was, um, it kind of like Halo, Halo 3 at a friend's house, just playing the Fiesta game modes, I always loved, just spawning in with random weapons and just having a good time seeing what you could do with those. Um, first shooter I played 
pretty seriously was Call of Duty World of War. I kind of grew up like teenage years was mostly Call of Duty, had a little bit of Battlefield and Halo as well. But um, just when Destiny came out, um, kind of fell in love with the PvP and then it had the PvE as well. And I just enjoyed both aspects of it, really. That's really cool. Um, Gray, um, PvP questions, personal questions, professional questions for our good friend Connor. Yeah, um, you know, first I just want to, uh, to, to boast on Connor a little bit and his skill. So just while you've been talking, Remy, I went to, to Destiny Tracker and looked Connor up. And this is the guy we're talking to. He is somebody who's in the top 2% for his DTR score. His KD yeah. ratio, lifetime, top 0.9%. Um, oh, my God. He is in the uh, maximum skill bracket for Trials of Osiris, true skill, 100%. Um, and I haven't even been able to get to his PvE stuff, which if you look <clears throat> at the chat, Mark Square says that he had double the kills that Mark Square had the last time that they ran in the raid. Um, he does all the challenge modes. You know, he says that he he mains PvP and chirping or PvP and chirping and PvE isn't his forte. But he's a very skilled player. I mean, any time that I'm going to go into a raid and I need somebody that can hold their own and carry some extra weight in a raid, <laughs> Connor can do it. He can certainly do it. And uh, and I'm I'm really appreciative that that you're part of Guardian One and that you. Uh, you really further the mission of Guardian One out in the community, um, playing with other people really beyond, and and wearing the Guardian One uh, badge really with with honor and representing us well. So we appreciate that, Connor. We're glad to have you. Um, so I do have a few questions for you. One question I have is, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Connie the Kami. Where does that come from? What's the history behind your handle? Uh, so. Obviously, my name is Connor, and then um, the gamer tag I made probably when I was like a sophomore in high school. So kind of going through world history, and um, just I thought communism was kind of bizarre and also like funny at the same time, especially Russian communism with Stalin just kind of like abusing his people. I thought it was such a strange thing, but also. <laughs> <laughs> just like I don't know, it was, it was bizarre to me, and then the alliteration with Connor. So I don't know. It, it, there's no super deep meaning. I'm not a communist or a socialist or anything. <laughs> just, <laughs> just the name. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Yep. And I just wanted to make sure that it was clear that uh, he's not a communist. We we need the hate mail to stop. He's not a communist. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hate mail for other things. It's wrong not with the gamer tag. Necessarily. Right, it's not like his name is. Don't, oh, don't get Agrios starting. Yeah, right. Seriously, don't get Agrios started. He loves these kind of topics. Like it, it was me, Jaded, and Agrios in a party a while back, and Agrios started saying all these like communism isn't bad, this and that, blah 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 blah. You know, it's like that's all we need is the government coming after us because Agrios is views. Okay, just be quiet, Agrios. <laughs> They're yes, and I, I got to give Mark Squared That's serious back. props. I mean, we give we give Mark Squared's props every week on this show, but uh, you can see Connor's logo on there, which is kind of mixing that, um, you know, World War II, uh, you know, those that new rocket type, uh, the socialist star on there. Um, he did a, a great job on that. It's one of my favorite. Probably, it actually could be my favorite icon that he made for um, for any one of the Guardian One members. I think he did a really cool job on that one. I think um, what Agros would say is that uh, communism is great on paper, horrible in practice. It's hard to execute. Well, I would say I think it's in the an ideal world, the people it's who the are ideal people governmental who are system, but we don't Guys, we're not going to waste time that we could be talking about Destiny 2 talking <laughs> about communism, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it links um, to old Russia, you know? It's, that's so, true. Exactly. The cosmos. <laughs> um, so... Uh, Connor, one thing I wanted to, to bring up that I have learned from playing with you and that you emphasize on your stream constantly is patience. Um, there's so many times that the engagement just isn't right. Uh, the angle at which the team is collapsing on the other team isn't working. And you will routine, routinely say, hold on, guys, let's just fall back. Let's regroup. We don't, we don't need to force this right now. Um, 
tell me a little bit how that attitude has served you well when you play in PvP. And then how do you get other people to learn that uh, instead of just trying to jump in there and and run in and and gun like the kind of that internal feeling makes you think you should be doing. So especially in trials, uh, your life is the most important thing you possess. If you get two kills but you die and your body is on that last person and we can't follow up, then you might as well have not got those two kills because it's not useful for us. So I just kind of – you just have to stay alive in trials in general. So if you don't have a proper engagement or one that – you have an advantage in to start, then it's not worth taking, in my opinion. There's no reason to take a 50-50 engagement with a sniper or less if if it really just does come down to a coin flip. When you're more skilled than another person, it doesn't make sense to give them an advantage by making a poor decision and initiating a fight when they have an advantage. Man, that's really great. Yeah, I've got a few more questions, but um, I'm going to allow this to go around the horn. And if nobody else asks, I will follow up. Sharks. OK, so as as a PvP player, uh, it's it's really nice to have somebody on uh, that is really, really good, way better than I am. Um, but and, and you like to, uh, you know, you said right away, you know, basically play the meta. Which is true. If you wanna, if you wanna do better than a uh, majority of the other people, it's played no matter. But let's be honest. You you have a skill that probably translates over to other games. So why don't you tell the um, the public how you play in other games? Are you on the top echelon with like, for instance, Call of Duty when you were doing Call of Duty? So. Um... I guess so, yeah. In Call of Duty, I, I definitely have declined my playtime in Call of Duty, but it was def- it was a progression. So I remember in Black Ops 2, my kill death was like a 1.4 or something, and then the next Call of Duty was Ghost, and it jumped to like a 2.1 or something, and I realized that I was just making better decisions. So it was kind of just a development of the skills I was learning from playing and also just consuming a lot of Call of Duty content. Now it's a lot of Destiny content. Um, I also play a lot of Overwatch. If anyone knows, I'm ranked Masters in that. I was up to Grandmasters last season. But um, I mean support, actually, in Overwatch, which is a little bit different than um, in Destiny. I'm, I'm definitely more of... In Sixes when I play, I'm usually on Golden Gun. And um, I love slaying on Golden Gun, but in threes and trials, it's about Night Stalker and it's about staying alive. So my play style honestly differs in between game modes I'm playing. And I, like I said, I actually am a, like a support main in Overwatch. So it's it's kind of bizarre, I guess. I'm not always out to <clears throat> kill everyone. Right. Some basically some of it comes down to natural skill, but some of it comes down to play styles and whatnot. Um, how how would you you know that when when you're going in and you're playing with people, especially in your case, you're bringing in people that um, are trying to go to the lighthouse um, and maybe don't have that that skill set. And in reality, you you can only learn so much. What would you tell those people as far as, as you know, continue playing, continue trying this? You know, it's 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 fine and dandy playing the meta and 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 trying to you know learn to do different things, but but how would somebody that say has a 0.5 kill death ratio, how, how would you say, okay, this is what you need to do to to become better? Uh, the biggest tip I would give to anyone looking to get better, and even myself, is play with people that are better than you. Play against people that are better than you, but also play with, on your side, people that are better than you. And kind of notice what they're doing throughout the game. Listen to the calls they're making. I talk a lot when I play, so 
I try and help my team out, especially in trials. I'm always communicating. And if you kind of just listen to that and try to understand the thought process, the decisions that that person is making and try and implement that into your own game, that's super helpful. So in, like, if you can and have access to it, you always want to be playing with people that are better than you. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I, okay. I totally agree with that. Now, the the one other one other thing I want to throw at you before I let somebody else uh, throw some questions at you, because um, it's PvP. I love it. I'm sorry. Um, what what is it that that you feel? I mean, we we all on the podcast have have made comments over you know pat basically the past two and a half years of what we've liked and what we haven't liked as far as the iteration of what's happened in the crucible. What about you? What, what is it that you've really liked how Bungie has, has gone even to what they're going to in this next iteration of, of destiny one. And what is it that you haven't liked that you wish that they hadn't done to the PVP mode? So I think that destiny and the PVP has so much character with each class being so much different. True Vanguard, um, I'm sure you guys are mostly familiar with him. That's how he describes it too. His destiny has more character than basically any game I've ever played before. So I, I've enjoyed how they've embraced that and they've doubled down on that with the stats increasing the speed at which you get certain abilities, the way you spec it. There are different types of different weapons so obviously you have like three different hand cannon archetypes but um so you have all these options even the artifacts maybe like memory of fell winter which takes away your super but gives you um two times on your melee and grenade and i really have enjoyed all the different choices you can make in terms of your loadout and if you can make it work for you it doesn't matter how good it is for anyone else. So I've really enjoyed all the different, the variety in terms of weapons. And, you know, sometimes it has been a little bit limited in terms of weapon usage based on what has risen to the top. But I've, the character that Destiny has in the multiplayer is something unlike most games have. And with this most recent patch, I think they've, made a mistake and taken away a lot of that character by removing most of the special weapons from the game that was obviously they're powerful but i think that's kind of what made destiny multiplayer different than a lot of different than a lot of other games and it's in my opinion a little bit less fun it's a lot slower because you're not making as many big plays because you don't have the capacity to do so with the weapons you have in your loadout Was that it? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Are you doing I, I don't want to. I don't want to hog up all the time. Yeah, go for it. I was waiting for you <laughs> to re- jump in right there, Remy. Sorry. We. I okay. So here's what I think you're doing. I think you're staring at those pretzels shaped thrall. <laughs> And you're yeah, deciding whether one. or not to eat them right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so the you unfortunate side is you've already dipped it in YouTube. mustard. <laughs> okay, so I got I got my my thrall uh from the the construct set that uh agro sent me uh, i had to have him resend me some mega uh mega constructs or mega blocks what it used to be called uh in the box uh it was all all congealed and whatnot from when they uh when they put it together so they sent me a brand new set and i was showing everybody in stream earlier and uh and remy thought it looked like pretzels that pretzels. looked like brawl so <laughs> yeah that's not the case, but I am hungry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you might have two in there in just a few moments. I see. <clears throat> uh, all right, Agrios, questions for Connor. Okay. Uh, well, I, I think everybody's kind of covered a lot of the personal ones. So this is gonna. I'm gonna go more into how you know he sees destiny. Two things. One, if you could tell the uh, crucible designers one thing they listen to you tell them one thing what would it be and 
with the recent drastic changes to the PvP in Destiny here at the end, what do you think that means for PvP in Destiny 2? Uh, one thing that I would tell them is keep... Well, I would go two things. First of all, connection is important. The way you match people together, ranked and social, should definitely exist. Like, I, if you go into social... It's okay to get your butt kicked a couple, like a few times, and you can do some butt kicking yourself. But if you go into ranked, you should see equal players, equal skill level players, on your team and against your team, and um, that. Do Do is... you think that in trials also? No, I I think trials is fine the way it is. I think that it, it's unfortunate that I've. I all play a team. We'll play a team on our first or second game, and we'll five zero them and give give up like one kill to them. And I I do think it's unfortunate that that happens, but the progression in terms of uh, just wins is I think how you how you kind of split up the matchmaking like that. I I don't think trials should have skill based matchmaking. I think it's fine. In terms of win based, it does end up. I think it's a little bit too strict, possibly, in terms of who they match you up with, and it sacrifices connections a little bit too often. So trials can be kind of laggy sometimes, but I think that ranked and social playlists for other game modes are important. I do think trials is in kind of a bad state with the special economy, special ammo economy right now. It's kind of campy um it, even i i don't often see the memory of scory camp super fest that a lot of people complain about but i do think that it is a lot slower without special ammo and if i'm using a shotgun i have to wait 30 seconds for ammo to come up for me to even have the opportunity to make a play so i think that Ranked and social playlists in PvP are important. And then don't take away, don't remove the character from the game like I talked about a little bit earlier. I think that there is a lot that Destiny has to offer. And if you're making it more like Halo, then I think that's less fun because we've already experienced what it's like with all these different weapons available to use at almost all times. And then um, for Destiny 2, I think that the PvP should have separate balancing from PvE. That's kind of unrelated, I guess, to the question, but now I think about it. I think that something needs to be done about that. And then I think that a lot, I think a lot more emphasis has to be made on PvP balancing. Um, more frequent because right wh where we were at with the Matador Clever Dragon Stormcaller that was recently removed last month or nerfed I guess um, it just took too long and it was it kind of fatigued a lot of people myself included uh, I think more constant balancing needs to be made for a PvP in Destiny 2 Okay, so you said um, that you really appreciate the character in Destiny and how they're, they've broken down, and this is something that I also appreciate in Destiny, they've broken down every aspect of the game um, and then put certain emphasis on different pieces of gear, you know, like being able to switch between weapons, how quickly that happens, how quickly you aim down scope, um, how quickly, you know, the grenade re, um, recharges all of these things. What would you say? And I'm asking you this because I'm a, I came from a, a, a fairly big um, Halo background, and I I love what what Bungie has done with Destiny, but I still feel like there's a place for um, a uniform um, gameplay, like mm -hmm. like. Like one of the things that that gets me, like, like I, I like the the character that Destiny has, but one of the things I really appreciated about Halo was that I knew if somebody killed me versus me killing them, that they simply outplayed me. Like there was no, oh, he's got that special gun, I didn't really have a chance. Anyways, 
it was always it was always um well he had an assault rifle i had an assault rifle i beat him i beat him there was no i had a better weapon he didn't have time to put into grinding it it was down to skill and and for like five years of my life i outlined this this huge tournament within halo um where it would play very much like football there it was it was neutral assault um and i had it to where there was a flow that when the ball got reset that everybody lined back up in their original in their original lineup and one of the things that i want to do going into destiny destiny 2 um i want to really push the idea of a uniform game like i i i love what destiny has done but i feel like there's a place for you know, here is this season's this season's weapon and armor are everything that's available in the tower right now. Like just period. Like no, um, no variances on that. You buy the one from the vendor, and and so if so if anybody has that gun, they all have that same gun. I feel like because I've I've rolled around in so much of Destiny's character that having a uniform. Um, you having uniform gameplay would bring another exciting aspect back and that would be just skill pure skill um do you feel like there's any any place for this in destiny or i mean you did say that we've already experienced this with halo and this is how a lot of other games work um do you feel like that would be something that you would be interested in would you give that a chance yeah absolutely and i it's kind of my idea but also like a combination of a lot of other things i've heard is i think that the gunsmith would be a perfect place to offer standardized weapons that have like you, you it just like the Kavostov basically where you have these standard weapons and all the nodes available for that particular weapon. And you can select those nodes yourself. So you can it, it basically have the same exact weapon as anyone else, but you would have to put the weapon at a low enough light such that it's it's only usable in the rank like the ranked playlist or the social playlist i do not think would be light enabled so you could bring those standardized weapons in that allow you to customize your experience and even the playing field because everyone would have the option to use that weapon so that is maybe like a 200 light weapon or something like the test weapons of the gunsmith but you have yeah. the option to use any node you want of any archetype of any weapon you'd like, but then you still have, I for trials and Iron Banner or whatever light level enabled playlists you have, you those weapons aren't an option just because it it's not necessarily about being the most competitive or competitively balanced in those playlists, but how much time have you put in to give yourself an advantage over other people? Right. I, and that's kind of something that I, I wanted to strip away. You know, like I I like the idea of people meeting on a on a more even footing. You know, I just just since Rise of Iron came out, I got my first hot hopscotch pilgrim. Um, and I know that, you know, Martin, poor Martin, Destiny Overwatch, he ground the crap out of that strike until he got the one that he wanted. And then, like, I don't know, it wasn't even a month later before yeah, they, they changed they, the archetype. Yeah, yeah, they nerfed it. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> excellent. Uh, Agrios, did you have another question? Did that answer your question? Yes, very good. Excellent. Jez, what question do you have uh, for our good friend Connor? Um, so I can't really think of any really good questions, uh, but the best thing I can think of is I want to know where you stand on the divide between PvE and PvP. As in, do you want them to keep everything the same so your gun works the same in both ways? Or do you want the guns to work different in PvP than PvE? I First of all, I think that if you don't play a certain aspect of the game you're seriously missing out on uh, basically half the game. And, and I get that some people maybe don't enjoy PvP or they think running strikes is a little bit re repetitive and boring, but this game is unlike anything else I've played, really, and I think that you're really missing out on a lot if you are only playing one side. And then for the functionality of the weapons, I think... 
that maybe there are only certain weapons that are available in P. I think PVE is the real problem in that you can't, or I guess PVP is a problem because you can't add su- super cool, outrageous weapons like like the Norfleet from Borderlands, just as an example, just like ridiculous weapons that do silly things. They, they're limited in that regard for PVP design. But I do think that you should, that there shouldn't be entirely separate sets for PVE and PVP. Because uh, I know one of the big things that people that only play one side, uh, especially the PVE side, PVE side, because they tend to not care so much about the PVE side as far as balance goes. But as soon as something gets changed on the PVP side and then it affects how PVE is played, everyone is so up in arms. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the truth nerf is an <laughs> outstanding example of that. And that's, I think that was just a, like massive short-sightedness, really. I think that they have to be more careful and put more forethought into the changes that they're making. And, you know, maybe, I, like, truth, I think, in the two facets was not a problem, but popular. One, because they've kind of nerfed the hell out of exotic weapons or primaries and specials, like with the exception of Icebreaker now is truly, I think, the only thing that people are using in the special slot as an exotic. And a lot of people aren't using exotic primaries either. So I think it's a combination of other exotic weapons not being super useful. And then also just the truth offering a little bit too much so maybe you slow down the velocity or the blast radius instead of taking away two rockets you know it's interesting that you say velocity just because the thing that like i'm going through my vault space right now and i'm trying my best to get rid of anything i don't need and i can't decide whether i want a high velocity rocket or a low velocity rocket because in some cases i've shot a rocket at someone and missed completely but because they thought it was going to because they thought it was going to be coming so much quicker, their dodge would have worked great for a really fast rocket, but because it was a slow rocket, they landed right on it. Uh, And so, I don't know. I forgot what you were talking about. I felt like that was valid. Uh, Jez, did that answer your question? Yeah, I'm good. Excellent. Um, Gray, uh, circling back to you, did you have more questions for Connor? Yeah, so one thing that I've kind of been thinking about with uh, the the fact that destiny 2 is on the horizon the question is what element could they change in pvp that would change up the game the most for you and the one that comes to my mind just to give you a chance to think for a second connor what if you could actually sprint while running backwards so you didn't have to actually turn around when trying to disengage from an enemy and how much that could actually affect your ability to move quickly out of engagement but still be firing or at least providing some cover fire so that the person who's engaging you doesn't just mow you over from behind. Um, That would dynamically change the engagement. I'm not even saying that I want it, that it's good, that it's bad. I'm just saying I think that would really change up how PvP would possibly play. Um, So Connor, what would be something in PvP that would change with Destiny 2 that would really shake it up for you? I think adding more or less perfect inner accuracy for all weapons would change the game a lot. Hand cannons benefit tremendously from having that, especially when you put Icarus on top of that, when you can pretty reliably land air aerial hand cannon shots and no other archetype or any type of weapon really can do that. So you're able to approach people with hand cannons differently than with any other weapon really and that's why you see so much use in competitive because first of all they're consistent in terms of damage output you can count how many shots you need it's very easy to see like you don't for the most popular archetype you only need one headshot and two body shots and you know they're dead and you can approach in different ways it, it allows you to approach in ways that other weapons cannot good points um then kind of segueing and actually we certainly go around the horn to see if you guys have thoughts on that too but um 
tell us a little bit about Connor outside the game. We've heard a lot about your skills in the game. Um, you know, who's this, uh, who's this guy in the real world? What do you do? What are your interests? Um, you know, what's on the horizon for you? Uh, so I am a fourth year civil engineering student and I'm graduating in June and kind of, you know, trying to figure out what I'm going to do after I've got, um, hopefully a spot lined up for this spring in terms of an internship through the summer and then possibly full time after that. So about to become like a real life adult. Um, I enjoy, <laughs> Don't I enjoy, do it. Yeah, I know <laughs> I try to avoid it as long as possible. Believe me. Um, I am pretty reserved actually, although I talk a bunch when I'm playing, <laughs> I am fairly, um, fairly reserved, pretty, pretty introverted. Um, and then I also enjoy kind of just like improving my like self self improvement, I think is a really big part of kind of developing as a person. So for me, that's, um, just staying in shape. I enjoy going to the rec center, lifting weights, playing racquetball, playing volleyball. And then also just, I, I do enjoy playing games as well. Obviously, uh, I do play other games, but Destiny, I come back to a lot of the time. I'm not very exciting, I promise. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. You just listed off a bunch of uh, shit I wish I was. So, <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, so, so what is the difference between a civil engineer and just your regular run-of-the-mill engineer or like an uncivil engineer? <laughs> Uh, a civil engineer is all infrastructure, so buildings, bridges, roadways, everything that you kind of use on a daily basis but don't really realize you use. That's kind of how I describe it. Whereas you have other things like mechanical, which is like airplanes, um, things that move really, mechanical systems, yeah. Uh, aerospace, obviously space. Um, you have like chemical engineering or materials engineering kind of creating products and um, just using like chemistry and the properties of those S civil engineering is kind of like bigger picture. So uh, I just infrastructure in general, really, and depends on uh, what you do if you're on the design side or the contracting side. So if you're designing it and um, you have to, kind of figure out like work with the codes that have been established and make sure that all your stuff meets spec and code or you're building it and you have a set of plans and you kind of look at that and basically construct it how it was uh, drawn man i can't uh I can't express enough how fascinating and boring that sounds at the same exact time. <laughs> like that sounds really great. And it also sounds really not great. What, what is the your, what hell is, is your problem? It's not I, boring. <laughs> no, I, but I said at the same time, it sounds very exciting. Like it's, it, it I like, I can't, I can't decide which one I, I, I think it is more 51% of both. What is your end game with that? What are you, what are you uh, looking to get out of that? Uh, I'm looking to go into uh, like right now I'm, I'd like both. I've had experience from internships in construction, so I would like to get, um, actually see both, um, design side and construction. So maybe you're designing one project, but then you're managing another, making sure that your contractor is, um, kind of building up, building everything the way it was drawn. And, um, I plan on getting uh, certified as a professional engineer. Uh, you need two years of work experience for that. So hopefully within the next two or three years after I've got that done and then potentially uh, project management as well, just kind of overseeing everything and assigning people to where they need to be and what they need to do. Yeah. Okay. So you're making you're making good on that promise of not being very interesting. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, great. Did you uh, did you have more for him? Uh, no. That kind of wraps up uh, my questions. We can go to sharks. Oh, you threw me off because I was uh, going to the Twitch chat. Um, Is that what they call it nowadays? 
Hey, you guys, uh, <laughs> hold on a second. I got to go to the Twitch chat. <laughs> no! No, okay, so, no, here's here's my uh, my my final question before we go on to, because we've got a lot of, we got a, a lot of interesting news, and some of that news has to do with Destiny 2. Is there anything that you are hoping for as far as not just PvP, but obviously being <laughs> PvP orientated, uh, but it can be PvE, that you're you're hoping that you'll see in the next iteration of Destiny. Okay, stop. Oh. Stop. That's the next subject. <laughs> Later. That's the next subject. Uh, Agrios, anything more for Connor? I just got blacklisted. Yes. I just want everybody to no, know yes. I just got blacklisted. For Connor? Okay, cool. Uh, Connor, do you Didn't have know any... this works by now. <laughs> right? He should, shouldn't he? <laughs> um, I, I swear, I do it every week without even realizing it. What the hell? <laughs> Um, Connor, do you have any questions for us or do you have anything that you wanted to say? Uh, like knowing that you were going to be on the podcast, was there anything that you wanted to, uh, put out there, you know, maybe some, some shameless plugs or, uh, you know, anything like this? No, not really. I mean, I just appreciate you having me on the podcast. I obviously I consume a lot of destiny content media and a lot of podcasts is one of them. So it's a really a pleasure to be involved in one finally excellent well it's, it's great to have you here i really enjoy having <clears throat> people who have an extended set of knowledge on a particular subject um you know for instance sharks is our our pvp guy gray is our hang back and be cool guy with all of these brains he's the smart one agrios too <laughs> Agrios is the uh, is Leroy Jenkins, uh, and and Jez Jez is our uh, <laughs> is our our common courtesy guy. He's the nice guy of the group, uh, and he does the the lookups. So having someone with even more PvP knowledge than Sharks uh, is really great. It's really great because he's got a lot of questions, and I know that it's a a huge interest to him. And you're totally right when you say that if you're not playing PvP and PVE, you're you're missing out on a big part of the game. Game. You know, one last question for you before we move on. What do you think that that Bungie could do to slope the floor a little bit more for regular people to play? Because I feel like if we had just that many more people playing PvP, everyone would be getting what they're looking for, which is a match against somebody who's equal or better, not not so much in one direction or the other because because my two games I'm either on the top of the on the top of the list and I get like 20 kills and my KD is like 14.0 or something like this or uh, and we lose I'm at the top and we lose or I'm at the bottom with like six kills and zero deaths and we win so what can Bungie do to make more people who only play PvP or only play PvE try out PvP and what can they do to keep them I feel like they did a really good job with like the daily marks and uh, you know upping the amount of rewards is there anything else that Bungie could do to to to, to push that up I think, like I said, if you introduce social and ranked, that gives people who are more casual just uh, and may, uh, definitely new game modes as well. Uh, I've been playing Halo a bit recently, and there are a bunch of different game modes in the social playlist that I th I would assume just draw people in. Obviously, Halo is definitely more about the PvP, but just kind of fun and exciting game modes that kind of make the gameplay differently and then you also have to incentivize it and the best way to do that was probably through rewards right now you've got you've got mostly weapons dropping that well i mean all of them all the primaries are kinetic and then in general they're not super useful for pve i think what they did with trials with making the adept weapons available obviously that was kind of controversial because they came just from the lighthouse but if you have that incentive to improve as a player and get a weapon that you wouldn't otherwise have access to by being better and improving and getting there and earning that weapon i think that's another way that they could do it obviously a lot of people trials isn't their thing it's too stressful they didn't enjoy it but I don't I don't understand or um, I, I just don't yeah I don't understand the the mentality of not having one weapon and being I guess offended 
by the fact that Bungie put a weapon or a set of weapons in the game that is maybe exclusive to a certain or a particular skill set. Obviously, now with elemental primaries coming back, uh, you have to complete the challenge mode. So I don't, and uh, especially especially with Axis and Vosik, I think those are two particularly different difficult challenge modes that will now reward elemental primaries. I don't want to get too far into the news, but in general, I think if you have um, just incentives, better incentives to get in there and improve as a player and play those playlists, then you have more engagement from people who are only stuck doing one thing. I agree. I agree. Uh, And I'm looking forward to see what they have in store. Okay. So let's move on to what is happening now. What is happening now is I went through my vault today and I, it was just a bloodbath. It was, it was, it was, it was easy. It was so easy for me by the end that I just started deleting things because I liked having space because having, you know, like I have half of one page in my armor vault is empty. And I just started like, I just, mm, you know, space in the vault. And so I just started hacking things. And before I knew it, uh, I, I had plenty of space in the armor vault and each of my characters has, <laughs> each of my characters. what did you do with your bungee? Seriously, it feels, it feels good. Do. Doesn't it? It, it feels, you know, it's it 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 feels good, and it has a lot to do with the fact that Bungie has freed me. I'd been asking for them to free me for the longest time. Let me know if anything's transferring over. I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't in my heart, but in my brain and my love for the things that I've collected, I just couldn't do it. Nothing's carrying over. Here's a bunch of new crap that you can get. It all just rolled into this thing, and so I just started off with uh, I started off with actually what I thought was going to be the hardest part. Turned out to be the easiest was my Titan marks. Granted, there's some that I'm not ever getting rid of. My first uh, mark of the six fronts. I love that. I love that mark. Uh, I'm never going to delete it. It will be on my Destiny One Titan forever. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that I can still get the mark of the six fronts after uh, Age of Triumphs drops because I have not gotten the legendary version on either of my Titans on either system. Um, but so it's, I'm, I'm, you know, hearing about things that are happening in the community and, and Destiny 2 is said to come out later on this year. Um, <clears throat> I want to know from each of you what one thing, Sharks, uh, it, it has to be in Destiny 2. What one thing has to be in Destiny 2? Because... <clears throat> because as I'm thinking about, you know, all of the all of the flack that Bungie has gotten for Destiny, all of the flack I have given Bungie for Destiny, I love Destiny and I am very hard on Bungie. I'm very hard on their decisions. And I feel like that's the that's the best thing I can do is to just be honest with how I'm feeling. And I, I feel like Destiny 1 was fantastic in that if this is what they were trying to do, they accomplished that. But looking forward to destiny 2 how long they they have had to have been in uh production of this there has to be a huge difference there has to be there has to be a huge difference between destiny 1 and destiny 2 and there's just some things that can't be left out you know uh <clears throat> for some people this is beards for some reason um but i want to start uh <clears throat> with jez he has disappeared <laughs> he's turned into a chair as you can see there's like a green shirt on this chair <laughs> um but yeah i, I want to know i want to know what has to be in destiny 2 in order for you to know that bungie either a intended destiny 1 to be much more awesome than it was or b that they have just been listening to either their hearts or the words of the community <clears throat> uh and i want to start with jez jez what does what does destiny 2 have to have that will make you realize that they did with Destiny 1 what they had to do and Destiny 2 representing what they really wanted to do what difference are you are you looking for what difference is going to tell you that that this is they've, they've done it is it one thing if i say it all in one breath go for it <laughs> i'll allow it okay so i already failed <laughs> no. Uh, what I want is uh, I want a more branching not branching storyline but rather like 
procedurally generated raids in a way. Like, just more variations in a raid instead of the same thing over and over and over. And because it's still the same breath, I want non-combat in the raid. Like uh, jumping puzzles? Like jumping puzzles or just puzzles in general. Uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to more of like that owl sector. You know, even though I wasn't a part of it at all, I watched it go down live on Twitter and it was it was fantastic. Yeah, like, I, I love that. Like, what if you had something like that in the raid? Like, all the tools, all the information you need is in context in the raid. And it's required to get through. And, I'm digging it. And maybe, maybe make it random so it's not like, okay, input 1256. So, I... so, so kind of like the, um, the Outbreak Prime quest. Well, kind of, yeah. But where where you had where there was a specific set that worked, but it wasn't the same for exactly everyone. Maybe less obscure though. Like I don't want. Okay, <laughs> somehow you have to know that you have to jump on these particular pillars. <laughs> Maybe something more along the lines of uh, there's a bunch of glowing balls and you have to shoot them in a certain order, or something like that with context clues that you can find in the raid. That sounds great. I'm really interested in that as well. Uh, anything else? No, oh, that's it. Okay. Acrios, uh, I'm pointing the same question to you. You know, Destiny 1 <clears throat> was what it was. It wasn't anywhere near what I thought it was going to be. I'm certain it wasn't anywhere near what you thought it was going to be, but it was definitely interesting enough to for us to have put in so many hours and for us to be so heavily invested. This is uh, our 126th podcast about this game. Um, what is it that, that they have to have in Destiny 2 that it's going to let you know that <clears throat> Bungie is... is the the master at their craft that I believe them to be, you know, after having played all of these halos and just seeing how they carry themselves in the community and the community that they themselves. Uh, so, you know, what is it that it has to be in destiny Two for you to know that they either intended destiny one to be a lot better than it was, or that they're listening to their community about, about what is really, what is really needed for this uh, sequel. More space. More space as in <clears throat> like play area? Yep. Yeah, all the way around. Everything. Okay. Everything bigger, everything more space, everything more things to explore, more more area to fight in for the big battles, more area to to, to just everything. Mm -hmm. More space. So, <clears throat> so if we were answer, anyway. So if we were to consider um, Destiny One as <clears throat> Bruce Banner. And what what you'd really like to see is just Bruce Banner on some gamma radiation. No, nah, no, nah, I want to see an army of like a couple thousand hulks. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, I'll accept that. Um, also, because of me, I'm adding I, I, another you know, thing for the clouds. Of giant. I mean, that was the most underwhelming thing about Destiny One for me was, I mean, there's that infamous like you can see that over there, and you know all that. All playable that space. Aside. Totally. I, I mean, what does the, the the have to do things the weird part of your question to a degree? Because what do they have to do? Stay the course. I, I like everything that's happened so far. Like, stay the course. Like, I, I mean, I'm still going to be along if they stay the course and it just improves. If every aspect improves, like something that's a good product should, stay the course. There's all kinds of other awesome things I'd love to see. And, you know, you know how I, you know, like the dream for the, you know dream big but like what do they have to do to keep me around stay the course i like that answer and that's basically where i am um <clears throat> sharks uh what do you think about this what do you what do you think has to be in destiny 2 that's going to let you know that, that they have you in mind for what they're doing for this game that they're making okay so with all of the iterations of destiny 1 destiny vanilla Destiny beta, whatever you want to call this iteration of Destiny. Uh, they have had a lot of time to test different things. They need to have all the best things, and they know what the best things are because they listen to us 
and I, when I say us, I mean us as the community. They hear us, and they know what we like. They need to have all those awesome things, kind of like what they're doing with what we're going to talk about later, plus more. That's the only way I'm going to see them as actually listening to us as a community and having that in in Destiny. <laughs> you know, and I, I could sit here and I could say, especially as a PvP player, oh, you have to have dedicated servers. No, no, you, you, you don't have to have dedicated servers to have listened to us and to actually done something with the game. But you have to have at least all the stuff that you added that was good in the next game, plus a little bit more. Then, then I'll know they've been listening, and then I, as a gamer, will be happy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Sharks. Gray, same question. Uh, Destiny is, is one thing. Destiny is variable D. Uh, D to the power of what, what needs to be in Destiny 2 that's, that's going to make you... Like, like, like I, want, I want what you're thinking that Destiny 2 will be that from Bungie is going to do. Uh, I've been been thinking really hard about this the whole time and I just need some universal remote more universal remote (laughs) as much (laughs) U-dub as I can get so no, the, I, that's so that's all tongue in cheek. You want the easy button. <laughs> I want the easy button. No, uh, honestly though, what I want, I want secrets. I want there to be secrets, more secrets in the game, things that are hidden that you play through and you uncover. Uh, it kind of plays off of Agrios. Make it bigger, obviously more space, but more things hidden in that space. I want more black spindle type quests. I want things that people have to stumble upon and search for. And I want the feeling and I mean, I know I don't have this for Vault of Glass. I want this feeling of there is a chest here somewhere. There is a secret here somewhere. We know it's there. We just got to figure it out. I want more of that. I want to. I want a shit ton more of that. I like can, that. Can I add something to my my statement? Do it. And I also don't want repurposed shit two years <laughs> down the line. Just make the game. Let us play it. And play it for our heart's content as long as we can, you know, bear playing it until the next iteration of Destiny. Don't come back and give us shit that took 10 minutes to fix. Uh, Connor, same question to you. Uh, what is it What is it in Destiny 2 needs to be there that, that you're going to be excited about? It's going to let you know that Bungie it has, has been thinking this the whole time. The same thing that you're thinking that Destiny needs, they've been thinking that, and they chose not to put it into Destiny 1 because it fit better into Destiny 2, or reworking it in Destiny 1 wasn't going to, make, wasn't going to work. Uh, just quickly, PvP, like I said, different playlists for that, and like ranked and social that's that's it for pvp um like agro said and i agree with you guys is stay the course i was actually farming relic iron for the exotic sword quest today on the ps4 and we were talking about it a little bit in the group chat that we've come so far from year one and the game is so much better after each iteration we have an app so we can transfer things instead of going to the tower and getting the vault we can buy materials from the tower as long as they do that but we also need and i'm sure we'll get it is the feeling of discovery again i remember in destiny one you go to a certain a place or you pick up a weapon and you had know nothing about it i'm excited for that and i think that there there needs to be a greater expanse of that i i don't want to see YouTubers flown out and I don't want to see content destiny 2 content before the game releases. I think that Hurts the game a lot. I think that's detrimental to <laughs> To the expansions we've seen the last two years is being that that content being available. I want I don't want to see Any of the exotic weapons we have now. I want entirely new sets and I think that if they continue to expand upon the universe I'm not. I'm not super concerned. I, I I want them to continue and flesh out some of the story, but I I'm gonna play through the story probably once and then run those missions again. That's not a super big deal to me. Uh, Scrappy and chats as Grimoire too. I think they just need to 
kind of invest more in the story of the game and make make it more in your face and make you care about it more make you care about what you're getting and why you're getting it gotcha uh that's a really that's a really good answer i and i definitely agree with those things unfortunately from some of the things we're going to be talking about later on it appears that there will be exotics that move forward um from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. Um, I did want to say, YFD says, what I really want is more story, the kind of story that gets you hooked and thinking about the game even when not playing. And I feel like this was exactly what Destiny was Destiny was in the very beginning. You know, what is this traveler? Who are these creatures? <clears throat> um, I know right now I'm playing Mass Effect, and I still haven't wrapped my mind totally around the idea that these people traveled 600 years uh away from the Milky Way and also in time. So, you know, when they woke up 600 years later, who knows what's going on on Earth? 600 years is an amazing amount of time, and it's like they were frozen in time forever. Um, and there's a there's a theory about how long it will take people, like if we sent people out to the edge of our solar system right now, by the time they reached there, we would have technology that would get us there in a certain amount of time, like... I forgot what that's called. I, I should probably look that up. Um, but yeah, so I, I agree. You know, I'm I'm definitely interested in that. I'm curious to know how they're going to how they're going to pace themselves because I realize that they can't they can't make huge changes. Like the huge changes need to come with updates, and it it sets the world in a different place. You know, vanilla vanilla Destiny Tower feels different than this tower uh, because you know we didn't have Eris Morn hanging out. Um, and things like this. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like there's a lot of things that I, I want. I'm very wanty when it comes to destiny. And and God knows these poor people, these poor souls on this podcast and all the ones in chat and everyone who listens on iTube or, or, or iTube. <laughs> <laughs> copyright itube <laughs> uh itunes or youtube you know it's I, i'm a very wanty person like i want to see apartments i want to hang out in the spaceship in orbit i want to fly the spaceship shoot other uh pilots down uh i want like an arcade game in the tower where you put up a high score you know like, what about like frogger right but you're like zavala trying to cross this cabal line. I think that that would be really brilliant. Um, but yeah, basically, basically stay the course as, as loaded as that phrase is for people who were around uh, in the 2000s. Um, I feel like that's, that's really a, a great example of, of what I'm expecting, you know, and, and <clears throat> I, I can't help but always, 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 always go back to that, that one video in the Cosmodrome where it's like, oh, yeah, you see all this? This is all playable area. That was in my brain for years before Destiny came out. So when Destiny came out and it was basically this super linear, you know, this is the one direction you can go unless you want to go in this direction. Like, Wait I, I want to be Wait. lost. No, 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 no. Let, let's just be exactly what it, for people who may not have seen this clip or whatever. He shows you this clip from a specific point in Destiny and tells you you can go there. And not the only very beginning, there, but just you say start it. the there beginning. staring at it and aren't allowed to go there. <laughs> right. The thing is, uh, we're all remembering it wrong, though. Well, most of us are remembering it wrong. He doesn't say this is all playable area. He says this is all geometry. This is no, all. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He says you will be able to explore that. Well, there's a couple different videos exactly. actually. Yeah, there's, maybe there's like we're two or three videos different. from that time period, uh, and and there's two different people who are narrating it. So you might have seen one and not the other, or right. like me, you saw both. Was, because I forget about the one Jez is bringing up, but he's Pete right. Was that Parsons? Was it Pete Parsons that did that um, that video stream at the beginning? It was at Parsons did the one that you're talking about, sharks. Yeah. Oh, that's um, funny. I didn't know that was him. <laughs> I have a question for the panel. Um, we're talking about, you know, positive changes and changes for the future and things like that. What's the one change that Destiny has made that bothers you the most? Something we had and they changed and they took away and made different. Like what what change did they actually make to the game by choice, their choice to change the game that way that bothers you the most? Uh, I'll put it out there. Taking grimoire off of my nameplate. Yeah, that's a good one. Hmm. But great. Hey. Mine is uh, adding three as a coin. I wish they never would have done oh, it. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, you know what? I hated the crap out of that just because Agrios figured out the way to game the system and then had all of these exotics. It was just a bummer. I didn't want to get my exotics that, this Not way. only did he have all the exotics, <laughs> then he stopped playing at that point too. That was the same well, and, time he stopped playing as much. And think of how the downstream effect, for me, one of like my favorite thing in the game is playing the raids and how that affected the Wrath of the Machine raid. Granted, maybe you could have farmed and gotten your entire vault full of exotic ingrams by luck and chance but threes a coin is really what drove that situation where people could really load up on exotic ingrams and then get to just a ridiculously stupid light level i you know i hate it worst part of the game for me i'm gonna jump and say that in addition to three of coins uh the fact that even after an expansion the all the ingrams you picked up could be decrypted to become that expansion's ingrams or that expansion's loot that was also shitty okay along the same line it's too easy to level up and oh my god as a result encounters are too easy gray touched on it a little bit but being 385 or above 385 before entering normal mode wrath of the machine i don't understand how that may, mistake was made at Bungie. I'm 392 light, and I've played two weeks on the PlayStation. Let me see how many, how much time I've logged on the game itself. But um, it's it's too easy to level up right now, and as a result, I think that the I, I wish for harder boss fights as well. I guess that's kind of unrelated, but I think Skull Loss is the was the pinnacle of boss fights in this game and I, i'm talking after burn like when he wasn't one-shotting you with his cannon but i i want to be challenged on boss fights and that kind of goes along with making it too easy to level up and being having content available to the mass masses too early on i don't think a raid should be something that everyone is doing that first friday after the expansion comes out it's just okay. not how that's, it goes that's basically what I was going to say is basically a combination of all your things rolled up into one word or one three letter symbol RNG RNG. The second RNG went to as easy it is now it, it took away a lot from the game. Not to say that RNG was perfect in, in vanilla destiny. It sucked. I mean, it took all the way till what expansion was it that I got Hawkmoon. I got everything else in the game that didn't have Hawkmoon. But that RNG system, because it was so hard to get things, made the people that were going to play come back and play more. And to just give everybody everything, which is understandable for the people that can't play. For instance, my wife, she loves playing, but she can't play the amount of hours that I do or that Remy does, or Agrios does, you know, that the, putting in that much time to get stuff isn't realistic for a lot of players. But for us players that play so much, you know, you you do that easy RNG. It just is takes is our away disdain is our disdain for three of coins a one percenter thing? Are we being elitist? Probably. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, I didn't think even, so be, until you said that, but I think so now. You're totally no, right. Even, even other people out in the community that don't play as much have made comments about three coins saying that it's just there's no um, there's no excitement involved anymore and yeah, no reward. Right. You know, you're you're just playing and it's like, OK, you know, after so many three coins, you're going to get a reward. But these are they, people dedicated enough to Destiny in the community to come out and actually express this. I'm talking about the, the casuals that Destiny is just one of the games they might put in with their friends that yeah day. but those aren't the one percenters though this see the the problem no, we're is, the one percenters that play no i know but what you're saying is that oh the non-one percenters don't agree with three of coins like for instance my no, wife no, no, no. Likes, i'm saying we don't like the three of coins but no, the I know. general people like i understand what you're saying okay. what i'm oh, saying okay. is is like my wife likes three of coins because she knows after so many it's going to drop but that if if you had given those people that play very little in comparison, um, a higher chance for drop rates another way through RNG instead of just having the problem with three of coins isn't that it's dropping so fast. It takes seven games for um, or seven sets of coins 
for something to drop. That time period is there. It's just that you need to, instead of having three of coins where you're paying to do it, you just know that the RNG is going to be there instead of having RNG where you might not ever get it. See, there's got to be a happy medium in between. And I'm hoping that in Destiny 2, they find that happy medium because you have to appease both sides of the coin for you know for people to enjoy well, it I, I feel like there there is i mean this system exists out there they just didn't choose to embrace it. i think i think the idea was to give the players the the choice but i don't know what yeah i agree with you sharks there, there's definitely a better way to do it than the three of coins the three of coins were able to be manipulated and whatnot if yep. they just would have See, the fact is they just gave people with a lot of hours the ability to, to have an infinite number of chances at getting yep. these things. Well, okay. If they would instance, have still look, limited the number of three of coins you could get total per week. Right. Then, the, like, you know, they that would have helped, I think. Yeah, but the, the, the problem was the economy. Like, the economy of, of your strange coins, the economy of everything, it all compounded, and they just they j it just all spiraled out of control. I mean, you go to my vault right now, you know, Remy was talking about, oh, it's so amazing that he's getting rid of, basically he's he's getting rid of old vault vault stuff and whatnot that he knows he's going to be able to get in this in this next expansion that's coming on Tuesday. And, and you know, I, I, I did that a long time ago, but what I, instead what I've done is I've filled up my vault with, you know, a hundred um, exotic engrams. You know, they, they they should have never made the system for that to ever happen. I shouldn't have 100 exotic engrams. Doesn't matter that I'm a 1% player. Doesn't matter that I've played 3,000 hours. You know, that's just, it's broken in its own sense. You should delete them all. I You know what, I was <laughs> contemplating doing that. I was contemplating <laughs> doing a stream. I might do it uh, when I get back. Because, I mean, they're, it's all pointless anyways. I, I just want to, I want to delete everything. I just want to do a, a stream and delete literally everything and just start from scratch. But so, you know, we, should make it, <clears throat> we should make it like a, an event, though. Like if, if you're actually going to do that, Sharks, we should we should prop it up as an event, you know, like the 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 viewing of time of the century, you know, because people are going to be interested in that. Let's do it. Let's let's make that happen. Actually, you know, so at some point, like I was saying, like I got bloodthirsty for deleting things, but like I would, uh, I would reach certain pieces of gear and I'd snap out of it, like, uh, like when you first get turned into a vampire and you see your family member and you're like, oh, I'm really hungry, but I think I know you, so I'm gonna try and get out of here, um, you know, because that happens to all of us, right? And everyone here has had that happen, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> I, uh, so, I I get to certain pieces of gear and I just can't do it. Like I, I calm down and I realize I'm not going to delete everything. Uh, what are you gonna say, Gray? Uh, I just wanted to look something up because Jez is sleeping at the wheel, listening to Nightingale uh, sing. <laughs> I uh, Connie the Kami, he has 30 hours on PlayStation. He's in the top 96 percent. Good job, my friend. <laughs> and on Xbox, you have uh, 2,206 hours. Uh, top five percent. Excellent. What are your stats, Gray? Uh, not nearly as good. <laughs> uh, okay, where were we? Were we about to just talk about stuff? Maybe we should throw it to Agrios. Agrios, what we got going on in the world of Destiny? All kinds of stuff. All right, so let's uh let, before we get into the questionable material let's talk about what we found out this week with the uh, age of triumph sandbox reveal aka the return of deej's jacket <laughs> so uh this week we had uh artist ian uh ian uh wait what is that is that macintosh or mcintosh i don't know how's he pronounced that one i think they said macintosh Right, I've never even heard the second pronunciation, so <laughs> I think it was the first one. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> senior designer Josh Hamrick uh, also joined Deej on stage to talk about uh, our rewards that we'd be getting here. Um, now, I I've compiled a, a bunch of the information that they gave us, as well as the slew of information that has been trickled out by Josh Hamrick on Twitter, as well as a couple other folks. Uh in the time following that reveal. 
So for armor, there is newly designed armor for all the raids. Uh, the ornaments earned from the uh, new raid challenge modes can be used on any new raid set. So that's good. Um, the Vault of Glass and the Crota's End armor pieces look just like they did in year one when no ornament is equipped to them. The, uh, the new raid armor has new interactive energy effects. The uh, energy of the armor will protect you from some damage for a limited time on some of the sets. Once you're damaged, the energy will deplete or and then recharge. The Wrath of the Machine raid set has the most special effects as any armor set ever created for Destiny. I think you should note that that energy takes damage thing is a visual thing and not yeah. actually a yeah. thing that affects how much damage you can take. It was it was weirdly worded, but there's no way that you would be immune to damage because that would destroy PvP. Yeah, okay. I was under I was under the assumption that it was just a visual thing. Yeah. But it did react to that. Like when your shield was depleted, that is when your yeah, that is when those it's, effects it's more of a physical representation of your shield. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but I like what you were saying. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah. And then so it could be I just like I was 100 clear on that myself, to be honest. <laughs> it could be just like uh, when Crota's End came out, and every single person in the tower was wearing those same stupid sets of armor. Ah, continue. You don't like Glow Who? <laughs> <laughs> who even likes Glow Who? <laughs> Mark Come Square. On. I bet Mark Square <laughs> likes Glow Who. <laughs> Only when he loses the pre-game <laughs> or pre-show challenge. <laughs> Lobo has a yeah, Mark doesn't Just get to choose. Uh, Lobo, I believe during the Wrath of the Machine raid to find my way around in the dark the very first time we were in Axis's room. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I like you that. know while Crimson gave us Glowhoo, it also gave us cryptographic. So true. Mm -hmm. That shader is terrible too. No, oh, I hate. I you. like Glowhoo better than Crimson. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, just made an enemy. You just made an enemy, Agrios. <laughs> I know. I, I do that. I do that when I said it. Um, so there's also a new Age of Triumph Chroma armor set, and it will come from the new treasure boxes. Uh, there, there is also matching reactive Chroma class items that can be obtained from the new speaker's quest. Um while we're on the, the note of armor, they did mention one small change to an exotic armor piece, the Astrocyte Verse buff. Uh, it, they're, they're taking it from plus three recovery to plus seven recovery. So, uh, the uh, vendors in the tower will now have a, a weekly refresh. That it would include uh, the Vanguard class vendors, Ikora Cade Zavala, the Vanguard Quartermaster, Lord Shax, Crucible Quartermaster, Dead Orbit, Future War Call, a new monarchy. All of them will get uh, rotating perks on armor and weapons. Um, the uh, other vendors, the Speaker, Varix, and Shiro, will continue to function as they have been. This is great. This is great news. I don't want to stop. It should have been that way all along. Right, I don't uh, want to stop no, I think, the flow of information, I think you but this stop. is fantastic. Okay, this, this goes into exactly what I was saying when you were asking what you want to see in Destiny 2. This is, this is Bungie going and finding out what is best and what people really want and implementing it. You know, this is smart. This should have been going on from day one. Right, right. And I can't imagine that it would have been such a strain on their ability to do this like just give us a different role every week or even every month you know like like let's even just look at it monthly uh that would give everyone enough time to buy what whatever it is that they're looking for that would be really cool so i missed this part of the stream uh, is is it absolutely clear that it's only the role that's changing or is there a chance the stream yeah this, this came first from it was not clear but it was then clarified that it was okay on twitter because yeah. this is great but how awesome would it be if they actually like were rotating all weapons and armor too like trying to bring everything through uh so that you know one week all of oh wow a thousand yard stare and then here's a year one weapon that's come up and different things like that you know to actually bring in all these weapons that are in the game and give people a chance to buy them that would be a little bit better but i'm i'm happy that there's gonna be different roles while we're on that note 
they have also made it clear at this point that no other year one guns will be coming back. Continuing. Also, sort of on that same note, uh, the best part about all these guns coming back and rotating every week is we're also getting a whole lot more legendary marks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are. You know what I would like is that cap to lift. That's why that's why Josh went and uh, made a comment on it, too, because everybody was like, what the hell's point of all these legendary marks? You know, you can get legendary marks coming out your wazoo, but you're not going to spend them on anything. Well, now you actually do have uh, the ability to spend now, them. Now it's the flip. Now it's going to be tough getting enough legendary marks to, like, buy the things you want at times. Maybe. Yeah. Or I more think that's like, better for the game. You have to I make mean, decisions. you can just shred your vault and you'll be fine. I wish they'd up the cap. I wish it wasn't locked at 200. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, they haven't said everything yet. I mean, with the new amount you can earn and the new rotating, I I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see it. I think they want you to burn them. I'm very surprised. Because then you you go into the same downroad spiral. Okay, so imagine this. Imagine that there had been no cap on marks. I'll just talk myself. I'd have so many marks. Well, no, there needs to be a cap. 200 is just too low based on the cost of the items is my right. point. Check this out, Gray. Before you started playing Destiny, uh, marks were character-based. So you could have 200 on each of your characters. And not only that... Check this out. Before you started playing, marks didn't even exist. <laughs> back in the <laughs> day... Crucible and Vanguard marks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah back in the marks. day, they were, they were separate. separate. It was Crucible and Vanguard marks. So you couldn't just buy anything anywhere, uh, and it was 200 per character. Isn't that crazy? And, and you had to earn PvP marks in order to buy vendor stuff. Right, like, PvP like marks? Not vendor PvP. Stuff, All of the factions faction were stuff. PvP marks. Isn't that crazy? That's that crazy. crazy, guys. Right. Moving on. Snow 10 feet tall. That Walking is... my bare feet. That is you, you could Meg. You could go and you could explore all this space. <laughs> Yeah, you can yeah. all. They won. This is all geometry. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so weapons. There's new adept versions that will have uh, a chance to drop from the challenge modes. The adept uh, raid primaries are exotics and have elemental damage. They uh, will also have legendary versions that will exist up to 400 light, but they don't have the elemental damage. Uh the add-up versions of the raid primaries are a completely separate separate weapon. They're not a toggle or a node or something that you apply to a legendary version of it to make it. They are their own entity altogether. They do, however, look completely different. The uh, <clears throat> the uh, no other primaries are going to have elemental damage added. Uh, the trials primary weapons are not going to be elemental specifically. It was a lot of a lot of people were questioning whether that was also going to be coming back as a thing, but it will not be. Um, the King's Fall weapons that wait, you know what? Wait, I want to stop third. you. I want to stop you. I do have to say, okay, I I think it is very sad that they did not do that with the trials of Osiris guns for the people that are big into trials. I think that would have made a lot of sense because they have made this division and whether it's been intended or not, there is a division between PVE and PVP and to, uh, I, I think that they should have given the opportunity to the people that are awesome at PVP to get adapt, um, um, different primaries you know with with all the elements i, I, I just you, i just think they should have done i disagree that. you do guys know you can pronounce it adept right what it's yes a de- a deep a de- deep <laughs> adept adept why 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 does jez always have to come in with his damn pronunciations he does this in chat all the time too okay i think we should ban him from guardian one chat and from the podcast <laughs> that's why we don't let him speak silence is a Mike. lot of english <laughs> So uh, uh, here's the thing. I agree with you, Sharks. I agree with you, Sharks. I disagree has to do with it. Sharks entirely. Mm. <laughs> you disagree? Yeah, entirely. Okay, Why? you point, I counterpoint. not have unique exotics locked behind 
the most difficult PvP experience in the game. That's you right. haven't walked behind the most um, difficult PvE experience, the challenge modes. There is no difference. Absolutely there is. no there difference. Yes, there is. Difference. Because There's the people who are good difference. at PvP are not, don't, aren't going to have a tough time getting the PvE weapons, but the opposite is true. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, here's how, here's how I'm going to disagree with your disagreement. Okay, so I understand what you're saying. You're saying that you shouldn't have something that is PvP, I mean, PvE orientated, um, lock behind something PvP. Okay, that's No, I, I said unique exotics. Okay, unique exotics. Okay, All right. But, but here, here's the thing. A PvP player that is only a PvP player will not be able to do the raids, okay? They just don't. The, the, there are people that cannot do the raids, but they are amazing at PvP. No. There are also people that are amazing at <laughs> PvE raids and can't do PvE, okay? Now, there is one thing that is open to everybody, and that is strikes. For instance, nightfalls. Okay, you don't have to be a PvE god. Okay, we'll put Datto in PvE god. Okay, because dude does raids blindfolded. Okay, he likes so to let's, inflict let's, pain let's say upon that that's, himself. That's a god. Okay, and then we'll say God on PvP side. Since we're not going to use Connor, since he's in the in the podcast, we'll who, use somebody. Church, like before you say a name, who did Gothalian say that he was going to get a team together to help carry through these challenge modes? Was it? One of the guys that always carries him through trials. Who did he say? Right. I forget. I don't remember, but it, he did get some. He w he was going to get somebody to carry him. Gosh, okay, I gotta so look that up. But so here's the thing. The so the point is the raids Neal. aren't really that hard. And that's what you say because PvP. you're a PVE player, but you think that PVP is hard. So I don't think that. But uh, I've never that, met someone who could get to the lighthouse that thought they couldn't be part of a six man raid team. I okay. have. So wait. I have. So wait, you, so you're you're both right in a little in in the instances, okay? I feel like what we're looking at here is the greater number of people who who are not able to go to the lighthouse because they're not that good with PVP. I think that I think more people who are, can go to the lighthouse can get uh, their butts together on a raid than those people who get together on a raid can go to the lighthouse. Like we have people, competent people who play PVE, like. Let's say uh, Nerdy. Nerdy is a great PV, uh, P PVE player, but she's not going to she's not going to the lighthouse every weekend. Uh, but you know, and and I say that you're right, Sharks, because I believe it was Spanky who did not like PVE very much. Yeah, he but, was. But one. like lived PVP, lived PVP, right. and did it like it was nobody's business. And I feel like it's a lot easier to learn to defeat an artificial intelligence than it is to try and outfox an actual real person who's trying to outfox you. Like that's the difference here. Is what we're looking at is it's a lot easier to learn the patterns of an AI um, opponent than it is to learn the patterns of a of a real person of a real processing just as much yeah. information as like, you. Like, let me put it this way. I feel like I personally could take any five lighthouse peoples that have never played any PvP in their life and successfully go any of the raids the first time through. Definitely. Okay. I agree with this. But I don't think one of them could take any two PvEers I picked and go to the lighthouse. Right. I think hey, I think that um, it was real crafty. Sharks, can I That's who he was you tweeting on a about. Different part? Was who it? was it? And what I it was real crafty the that they were saying. And I think that there's a difference between like the raid and then what we're going to see, especially with, what did they say, Atheon challenge mode is the hardest right. thing it's that they've created. Mode. It's not just a raid. It, the it's challenge the modes challenge are where I think mode. things start getting a little bit more interesting, that right. you got to have right. a, a solid team to, to do it. And if you're not good at PvE or you don't like it and you don't like the communication aspect or the, the roles that you have to play in it, yeah, there's going to be some people that uh, are going to want that stuff that aren't going to be able to get it. Well, okay. See, yeah, I've always like looked that. at games. Right, hey, we got to move on. We got lots of stuff to cover, and we're okay. like got like 15 minutes left. Uh, I did want to end saying that Shaquille O'Neal asked Gathalian to take him through the raid. So did he really? Yeah, yeah. He tweeted at him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's funny. Continue. I can help him if they need it. I guess I'd be willing to. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so the King's Fall weapons that previously had an RNG last perk have had one perk chosen for the exotic version, so they're no longer randomized like that. They also noted that there are not uh, there are not ad adept versions of the uh, of the non harrowed King's Fall weapons. That would obviously be redundant. Um, <clears throat> The uh, adept weapons have, uh, oh yeah, they all have set elements they will drop with. The elements are not randomized. The outbreak, outbreak prime and touch of malice will not have elemental damage added to them. Uh, as I said before, no other year one guns are coming back. Several existing exotics are now going to be getting new ornaments, such as Sora's Regime, No Land Beyond, Dragon's Breath, and uh, Touch of Malice. Um... Outbreak Prime is not going to be getting an ornament yet, at least. And uh, Soros Regime is the only uh, exotic getting two new ornaments. Necrochasm has also been given an ornament. It's also got a buff. Now the Cursed Thrall Explosion only requires a normal kill. Uh, that's pretty big, actually. Yeah, that's it, huge. I, it's going to be a, a really amazing gun, I imagine, myself. Um, now they say Necrochasm is real, real good to quote them. Uh, a new quest will be available to get Necrochasm into your hands, but don't delete your Crux of Crota yet. They uh, noted that Pocket Infinity will not be receiving an updated exotic version. It's just too powerful. The uh, original shotgun in-air changes that were supposed to have landed last update will be pushed through and then monitored this update. The Chaperone is unfortunately also going to be affected by this. It wasn't supposed to be. Um, the lowest range hand cannons are going to receive a, a 2.75 range nerf. And all higher range hand cannons are going to get a 3 meter nerf. Uh, the ARs are not going to, going to receive a damage buff per se, but they will do more damage at longer ranges and have shallower damage fall off curve uh, than they did previously. Um, the hand cam, the hand cannon damage nerf does does one thing only, which is make fall off start three minutes or er, uh, three meters earlier. Everything else is still going to be unaffected with their performance. They've managed to pass the uh, patch the rescue mag glitch, and uh, Deej says that everything is back, everything is powerful, and everything is an option now. Uh, one final note about weapons, and this is a pretty major change and I think should uh, help alleviate some of the downsides of the, the most recent change to it. When you pick up special ammo in, in the Crucible, it will now automatically reload your weapon just like heavy ammo crates. So that that's great, I think, for the flow of play, at least. Definitely. Um in various miscellaneous changes, they, the blink recovery nerf has been removed. They uh, they made the HUD removal a little shorter. The uh, Scory's artifact will now run for a minute if you've got a kill while your super is full and will disable between rounds and trials of Osiris. Everybody's been harping about a Scory's change here. Um, Somebody uh, with good eyes noted a, a Crota's End Bridge change. It appears that they, they have their statues like that receive the relics from King's Fall now lined up along the Crota's End Bridge. So uh, apparently we'll have to be doing some relic work to... Uh, that, that apparently that's probably how Bungie cut the cheese. They noted that sticky nades are on the radar for a change, so they're definitely not done making uh, changes to the sandbox in that regard. And the health regen perks that now will now give a portion of health, uh, or, or the health regen perks, perks blah, blah, blah. the health regen perks that give a portion of health um, that work by giving a flat number of hit points back will now give 57. It was 36, but it won't unstun either the health or the shields. Um, unstunning means when they uh, immediately start regeneration. Uh, previously, it was 10 health and 10 shield back, and they became unstunned. Um, there is no word on the current PS exclusives making their way to Xbox, which is extremely unfortunate. Like, come on, get over it. Um, the updated Crucible daily bounties are now going to be more inclusive, no longer requiring specific <laughs> subclasses or fire teams. They fixed it, it. 
an issue where a player on the surviving team could use Fireborn to cause the round to continue even when all enemies were dead. And they also fixed an issue that allowed supers to stay active longer than intended. I can only assume this means like the infinite sunbreaker glitch. So these are the changes we can look forward coming up to in the in, in the next update. Do you want to talk <clears throat> about these quickly, Remy? No. no. Okay. We gotta, we gotta get to other things. Okay. So there's some warnings here in preparation for the next update. Uh, don't do any of your activities after the uh, changeover time the day before the update. If you do, you're going to get your rewards based on the old system instead of the new system and miss out on your new treasure boxes and such. Sum that up all in one little nutshell there. The uh, Mountaintop Crucible Crest is going away. If you want to finish it, finish it. The Hothead Rocket Launcher will be unobtainable after it is gone. Uh, real quickly, the Bungie Bounty this week is going to be us 5,000 walks in the Washington region. It'll be 3 p.m. Pacific on the PS4 playing Clash on March 25th. So big news today. Destiny 2 has leaked. Friday, September 8th is allegedly when it will launch. Speculation wait, that wait, 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 we'll get an wait. early launch date. Wait, before we start this, okay, I just want to make one comment. Okay, and my one comment is is I'm very, very I'm very, very excited for all of the new things. No, I no, I wanna be I wanna be truthful. I am very and I said this on the pre show, I am very, very <laughs> excited for all the new things that are coming in this update because if you had looked looked at this podcast last week, I wasn't saying that. I wasn't saying I was excited at all, okay? So it's with true. all these th with all these really neat things that they've added into the into the game, it is very exciting for me. I'm I I want to see it. I as a as a Destiny fan, I want to go and get it. Um I wish that they had not waited until basically the life of Destiny was about to extinguish before they did it, but that's how they did it. But now I just want to say, now I'm very, very disappointed, and I've said this almost every single time that Bungie has done this with um, promoting stuff, and it's not just coming from a um, from a podcast point of view that we're listening to all the information. They give too much information. They need to stop doing that. That's something that I hope that in Destiny 2, um, since we're going to lead into Destiny 2 leaks in a second, that they don't give us every single thing that's going to happen to the into the game because there is no there is no fun in playing a game if you know everything that you're going to get and everything you're going to see so okay so so what it, I'll, I'll offer you count here's my counter offer uh what if they showed a bunch of crap like they have been and it doesn't matter because it's so massive that this is just one of 12 strikes that they have or whatever because that's what I'm because that's what I'm interested in. I feel like they are thinking that what they've been doing with having streamers come on and showing the the entirety of a strike or some parts of the story, I feel like they feel that it's been going well. Um, and because I can't look at this from any other perspective than somebody who's been basically staring into the sun since I learned about this, um, you know, I, I feel like it is good. I feel like people who are on the fence about this, do I want to buy this? Here is a portion of that. I feel like the, what the problem has been with Bungie is that here is a good chunk of what's happening. Like, that's what I'm thinking. But let's just move on. <laughs> uh, Agrios, continue, please. Okay, so Destiny 2 leaked today. Friday, September 8th is the big day. Uh, a lot of people out there speculate that uh, part of the PlayStation exclusivity could be a few days early on launch. Putting uh, the PlayStation game exclusivity on Friday, September 8th and, you know, Xbox and PC potentially getting launched the following Tuesday. <clears throat> Um, the poster did note that there are going to be PlayStation exclusives continuing with Destiny 2, as well as a public beta. The uh, poster images leaked from an Intelli uh, Italian GameStop, and uh, takedown notices have been issued for media sources on the net distributing pictures of these posters. So this adds a fair amount of legitimacy to it. 
Uh, on top of that, uh, well-known uh, media personalities uh, for, for Destiny leaks have also confirmed, confirmed their authenticity. And uh, I've even checked with some of my private sources, which have given me the thumbs up as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. I want to see I want to see Bungie get all of their bonuses for releasing this year. I want it to be good. I'm not convinced that it's going to be good by the poster. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, do you have more information on this, Agrios, or should we toss this around? Well, let's toss this around. I mean, this is really all we have is the snapshot that everyone's seen and what can be uh, translated off of that, which is more or less PlayStation exclusives beta and Friday, September 8th. Did you say that? I mean, it's definitely a very eight? realistic sort of image on the poster. It just, it's exactly like the original Destiny poster. Well, I mean, they're Agarus. not wearing helmets. Agarus, did you say the beta was September 8th? No, the beta. No, they don't know you just that. know there's going to be a public beta. The, the, the game is set to launch allegedly September 8th. Yeah, but you mentioned something about Xbox not getting it until Tuesday. No, oh, okay. no, there's a lot of speculation out there that some of the PlayStation, that some of the PlayStation exclusivity, may be why the game is launching on Friday, September eighth, and that the people other than PlayStation will actually get their launch will be the following Tuesday. There, there was also something that went through, and this was confirmed by somebody's source, and I don't remember who it was that was talking about this, um, that the the beta was going to happen and what the exclusivity for one of the exclusivities that they know for PlayStation is that the beta is going to happen first on PlayStation. And that beta supposedly, if, if you're going off of this source or sources is going to happen in June, which would coincide with E3. Now, th th what Sharks is saying is accurate. Some of this information is out there, but this is even going even more speculative with even less right. sort of backing than, you know, what we have. These posters yeah. are real. We have multiple sources. Like, after the poster leaks came out, somebody else from somewhere else said, yep, same posters here, and sent in a picture. So, like, that starts to add a lot of credibility to what we know as far as the September 8th, the beta, and the PlayStation exclusivity. Although, like Shark says, there is some other information floating around out there. Allegedly, there's to be an eight-minute trailer at E3. Okay, now, yeah, this and about the, the date on it, I want to bring up the other side as an Xbox player. So Kotaku reported that another scenario here about the Friday release, and the reason for our, our audience here who might not know, usually games, at least for the North American market, are released on, on Tuesdays, not Fridays. Um, but... It's not uncommon for the European market and worldwide market to see a Friday release date. So it could be that a September 5th, the Tuesday prior, could be the North American release date with a later release date that Friday being the the European release date. Not guaranteed. Obviously, this is all spin foil, but it isn't, well, you know, we're not sitting here saying that the likely scenario or the only scenario to justify that Friday release date is <clears throat> a PlayStation exclusivity. It could well, be just the difference in, in markets. There's actually something else to back. There's actually something else to back Gray up too. Blizzard has released a number of games in North America on Fridays in the past several years. Here, Blizzard here's being an, kind of the one thing. unique company that that does do that, and Destiny could go yeah, that route. They easily one could. unique it, company, not named Nintendo. This, this is something else that um, that went through the the community today, uh, based off of this, is that um, the actual beta again this is all just people coming up with different theories but the beta releases september 8th and if that's the case which would be disappointing for some of us that means that later release for for the actual game because there are some people and including myself based off of a lot of the information that it wasn't going to be a september release this year it was going to be a later release maybe closer to christmas but again, this is all just speculation. But what I I want to bring it back to what what Remy was saying. Remy was like, "Oh, well, this is just a you know, just a boring poster. What's exciting about it? Oh, the only thing is, is that there there's no helmets on the on the guardians." Okay, so 
let let's let's go down this route. Let's talk about this real quick. What is exciting about this poster? If you just base it off of, it's not in game footage, but it's enough to give you information of what's going to happen in the potential um, new game. Um, fighting because they're in they're in you know they're, they've got their guns out. So fighting without helmets on that's a possibility. Um, if you look really really closely at the poster, they have beards. Okay, when we talked about this, uh, we talked about this at the beginning, you know, Remy was saying, oh, you know how some some people are really interested in beards. And it's not just for me. It's not about beards, even though I've got a beard. Okay, it's about the aesthetics in general. They have beards. You look at the characters, the aesthetics that they have, that they they had to remake the characters. Gray made a very, very uh big point this this afternoon he's like what the hell where's the exos you know yeah there's no exos there's there there's um all it is 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 humans but they probably couldn't get you for casting yeah but maybe they're doing that right. on purpose maybe it's maybe it's they're trying to show you a glimpse just a small glimpse at what the actual aesthetics are on these characters that you can make which goes into something that I said during the Guardian 1 pre-show is why the hell is it that when people come out with leaks that they never have good photos? It's just like looking <laughs> at Bigfoot or aliens. <clears throat> Take a damn good photo. You've got the technology nowadays. Okay, so so you know, you you've got all this really cool stuff that you might be able to see in this next iteration for our own characters, or going complete other side. Maybe these are just new characters that are going to be the main characters in the in the game. Who knows? Again, this is all just spin foil that we're going to be talking about for weeks and weeks to come until we hear more from Bungie. But it, it is very interesting that some of them have facial hair. And in fact, I don't think it's just the black character. I think if you look really closely, the white character actually has facial hair, too. So that that confirms beards. If that's true, Luke Smith, you are a god. I, mean, I think it confirms I mean, I sideburn sharks. Person. It confirms right, sideburns. Right, that's what burns. I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Side <laughs> I find it funny that it's the exact same, not the exact same actors probably, but it's the exact same type of actors. One black guy, one white guy, one white girl as the live action trailer. They're just in different roles. That's true. It is. It is. And, you know, this goes back to, is it just coincidence for all this stuff too nobody nobody really knows we love or maybe we those love... are the actors that are going to appear in the first live action commercial maybe oh, those would that be badass wouldn't that be badass <clears throat> connor what do you make of all this uh do you do you think that we'll see the game on september 8th did you have a chance to look through this information on the internet this evening yeah i saw the pictures i i agree with sharks like the posters and all of them are like Half the posters like half folded. I don't really understand, <laughs> but uh, I think first of all, it's an unfortunate time for a Destiny Two leak in terms of what we have on our plate right now. We've totally got they. I mean, they literally just released the final trailer for the Age of Triumph, yep. and that looked pretty exciting. Um, unfortunate time. I I don't think it's worth like I, especially like. They they recognize it. Deej too. Even in the weekly update, he has a PS. Is like, oh, you're expecting me to talk about something else? Well, we'll go one milestone at a time. I it's it's not even worth I think concerning ourselves with right now, just because there's so little information, and we actually have this somewhat exciting new stuff happening in the next week for the destiny we have, and uh, there's just not enough to even speculate about in terms of what's going on in that poster. I mean, obviously the date is kind of a big deal, but I think we all, or a lot of us, expected sometime in September, either late third quarter or early fourth quarter. I don't I don't see it getting pushed back into late October or November just because of everything that competes during that time. I you really know, hope they give up on the dumb exclusivity. I'm really disappointed about that too it like uh, i have the jade rabbit finally on playstation but it's ridiculous that it's still not coming and there's no word we likely won't even get to see that weapon zen meteor or uh the restorative mind strike on xbox i just don't Which see it happening. really lame really it's lame. okay and so that, well you also you also still have the ban on the on the pvp maps too don't you on xbox that's true yeah i forgot yeah. about that yep 
Okay, so I'm thinking the exact opposite of you and Sharks. Like, I don't think that it's an unfortunate time for this for this information to have leaked. I feel like there's no better time for this information to be leaked. And think about it this way. So you're, you're a player and you played some Destiny. It was cool, but you have other things to do in your life. Or it didn't really grab you. Um, and you weren't planning on picking up, you weren't planning on playing Destiny again until Destiny 2. You realized that it wasn't worth your time necessarily, uh, and so now these Destiny 2 leaks come out, and this pops up everyone's ears. People who are waiting for Destiny 2, all of a sudden, their eyes are back on Destiny, their eyes are back on Bungie, and Bungie's less than a week away from releasing all of all of this you know, all of these raids again and all light level max. Like this is something that a lot of the community has wanted and hasn't understood why they never brought up the, the okay, raids. I, to current I light understand level. what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying as far as using another hype to hype up to get people back to the game. But people that what you're saying is people are going to to see this Destiny 2 news and that's going to bring them in. Those are the same people that are already playing the game. So you I'm not you talking should, about those people. Yeah, but you are though because you're no, saying no. I I know people who played the hell out of Destiny in the beginning didn't you know they played all the way through up to King's Fall and then they just wandered away. You know, Rise of Iron didn't really hold it for them. Like, I know people. I, I know the people that I'm talking about, Sharks. Yeah, but I are you have saying that those people I have... based off of Destiny 2 leak information are going to come back to Destiny 1? I'm saying those people are a million times more likely to come back to Destiny 1 if they are looking at Destiny at all. Like yeah, but at, saying... this, but at this point in time, um, you're 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 still talking about people that already own the game. Okay, they're not going to come back, and it, it, nobody's going to go out and buy Destiny One because Destiny Two info has leaked. Yeah, so not talking about those people either. <laughs> but see, that's the only that's the only thing that matters, though. You already have enough hype coming with all the new stuff that they're putting into the game. Then to use leak information for a game that's not going to be released for six months now. Wait now, two weeks and 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 have the I think what, information. I, I think what Remy's trying to say is that there's people out here there who played Destiny for quite a while and then like fell off the radar like they just lost interest in Destiny. And they're not even paying attention to Destiny right now. They didn't even know Age of Triumph was about to hit. But now this Destiny 2 stuff that was trending on Twitter today, Destiny 2 trended on Twitter today. So now that's got their attention. They're like Destiny, and they look and they're like, "Oh, they're another free update." Oh, I already got you know that stuff. Uh, I might as well jump back in see what that's all about. I think I the think player base is a big thing. Yeah, I think the player base is a big thing. We're talking about how to get the how to get people back into PvP. You know, PvP is really dry, and so you're either a lifer in there or you don't realize that there's only lifers in there, and you step in and you get run over. Like. Let's let's make the pool bigger. I'm just saying that whether or not this was on purpose, whether or not this is wanted, I feel like this is a this is not a this is not as unfortunate as as Connor's making it seem. And now no, that I said I, that, <laughs> I see what you're saying, but I this is how I look at it because I said I even said this on the pre-show. I was really bummed. The one thing that I was bummed about this week is that whoever it was that's leaking the information. And I love leaks. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> You know, I, I live off of this stuff. This is, you know, every time more console ever put leaks before Destiny was ever released, I was like on top of it all the time. But I I just think it's really unfortunate that it seems that leaks always lately in the last, let's say, year that have come from Destiny have always come right on top of the heels of something else that was always already happening Wait until there's nothing going on. Your leak is going to be blow up even more. You know, Im imagine if if this had happened two weeks into Age um, Age of Triumph, and suddenly there's a Destiny leak. You know, of Destiny Two. Everybody's going to be on top of it. It's not going to be trending at nineteen thousand tweets. It's going to be trending at a hundred thousand tweets because everybody's going to be like, "What the hell? Something really, really crazy is going on." That's all I'm saying. But I like I say, I see what you're saying though, Remy. It's it's good for the player base now, but at Connor, the same time 
you were about to agree with me or disagree with me. Yeah, that's you make a really good point, actually, is because I obviously I <laughs> only kind of view it from the point of someone who plays the game a lot is on top of all the news. But if they're if they do see that, oh, hey, Destiny's 2 is coming out sometime soon. If there was a way for either Bungie to kind of recognize it, it just basically be like, and now is a great time to get back into Destiny 1. Obviously, they can't really incentivize it because we don't, we assume nothing is nothing is carrying over. Hopefully, yeah. we see emblems at least carry over, but uh, it's hard to incentivize. Oh, hey, it's great to get back into the game when nothing will totally. carry over, but either way, yeah. That's also, a really good point, too. I, you know what I want to add to this? The general, at least, consensus, you can agree or disagree, but a lot of people feel that this was not something that, that Bungie was completely surprised by, right? They sent out these posters off to various locations, and hey, <clears throat> it just just so happened that, that somebody got their phone out and took a, pic, took a picture when it said, don't open before Christmas, and they opened it before Christmas, <laughs> right? I, I'm not so naive to think that, that Bungie wasn't aware that the timing of this could result in this kind of an action, and they released a poster that is about as useless in terms of information as you could get. Mm -hmm. Now, if this was a 20-minute gameplay trailer, that oh, sucks. Yeah right because now you're looking at destiny 2 and the cool shit in it and you're going age of triumph i'm just gonna yeah. wait till september i just saw 20 <laughs> minutes of the most badass game that i could ever imagine i'm gonna go and play horizon zero dawn and zelda because age of triumph is no interest to me now but no they leaked out this generic poster that gives me nothing except made my day made me super excited made me even more pumped for age of triumph I, I think it was it was planned to be this way, and I think the way that it was released was the right way. Anything more, and it could have been negative, but they could have released this now. They could have released it last week. They could release it a month from now. It's going to have the same effect. Too little information to actually know anything, but it makes people feel good about the game that's going to be coming out sometime in the future. And nobody can complain they said too little <laughs> because they didn't say anything. <laughs> right. Right. You, you bring up really good point, Gray. That's really... Uh... Really on top of it. Um, okay. What do we got left, Agrios? Well, the, I mean, that's pretty much all of the news. Uh, there, there is one or two other things I, I picked up. Well, one other thing in particular I picked up from the community. And I, I don't know how much this applies to Destiny 1 since we're kind of trailing off. Like how many people are really in there still trying to play Tribe. Well, I guess the record book's coming out. So there's going to be a lot oh, of people yeah. trying to get to the lighthouse for that and stuff. But It's true. There's a suggestion I saw on the Reddit today. I didn't even realize this was really a thing because this isn't like the way my brain works. This isn't something I even like thought about. But um, apparently it's a thing for ELO farmers to go in and get their first like three wins in trials and ditch their card and go in and get three wins in trials and ditch their mm -hmm. card and go in and get three wins in trials and ditch their card uh, up their ELO. And this is making it for a really bad experience for new players because they just keep, you know, the, the first couple times they play they keep running in these awesome teams that should be up on their eight or ninth win but they just keep running cards of three wins to up their yellow and if they just made it that you couldn't delete a card with no losses on it it would prevent these people from farming yellow like that and make the trial experience better for everybody remy's muted <laughs> Yeah, I, I I really want the trials experience to be a little bit more spread out. I, I really feel like like I understand what you were saying, Connor, about in order to get better, you need to play with people who are better than you. But there's a there's a threshold. There's a threshold for how much better those people can be than you where you actually learn something. You know, if you just get steamrolled, there is the only thing that you've learned is that you, and without that gun that that person had, you're not competitive. You know, mm -hmm. you don't stand a chance. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that as well, Agrios. Um, also, um, <clears throat> shout out to um, um, Duba for his Vault of Glass video winning uh, Movie of the Week. Uh, yes. It's fantastic. 
Um, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that we got to that before we left. Uh, so that's it, Agrios. We're we're like way behind time. Yes, that negative, is everything. Negative ten minutes at this point. Uh, luckily, these things have still been <laughs> exporting to YouTube. So, all right. Well, then uh, that's it. That is the end of episode one hundred and twenty-six. Um, why don't we do some shout outs starting with you, Connor? You can um, say hello to some loved ones or give the people your, um, you know, anything that you do in the community. Like if you have a Twitch channel or a Twitter tag that you'd like to tell people where to find you. Uh, yeah, obviously, shout out to you guys for having me on. This was an awesome time. And uh, to the guy I do trials with a lot of the time, Perry or Paradactyl on Xbox. He's probably not listening, but that's not the point. <laughs> uh, just shout out to both you guys and everyone in the clan for being super cool and helping other people who may or may not deserve the help, but that's not the point either. Just doing some, <laughs> doing, doing stuff that not a lot of other people do in this community, and that's hard to do, I think. Uh, and Killing it. Sorry, sorry. And then if you, I'm pretty boring and don't tweet, but if you have any <laughs> questions for me, uh, the handle is at Connie the Commie, C O N N I T H E C O M M I. And then the Twitch, which I do kind of, it's been like once every two weeks, we're doing trials right now, is um, Connie underscore the underscore Commie. Awesome. <clears throat> awesome awesome killing it with those shout outs uh, because you know that's not the point but those are details that are important <laughs> yeah um <clears throat> gray uh, yeah actually so my shout out this week was going to be for duba we had him on the show a few weeks ago and he is one of the the rare people to get movie of the week twice i believe uh the first was for his exotic weapon wrap um he got an honorable mention for his exotic armor wrap and then now something completely different, something that he loves and he shared on the podcast with us, uh, it's just cinematics, environment, uh, great moving music to go with it, and totally different than his rap videos. Uh, congratulations on getting picked again for Movie of the Week. That is, that is awesome and a, a rare place to be. Not, not a lot of people get to, to climb that mountain twice, especially doing it in such different ways. Excellent. Sharks? Uh, this week I have two shout outs. Uh, first goes to Mega Constructs. Um, you guys do some really awesome stuff and your customer service is really awesome too. Uh, my second shout out goes to Josh Hamrick himself. Um, he is very, very engaging to everybody in the community and that is very much appreciated. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you guys weren't around when Sharks was telling us the story about how he called up and said, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell that on another, on another podcast, maybe next week. Agrios. Well, Sharks stole my shout out uh, with his little shout outs there to uh, Josh Hamrick. He uh, is really getting out there, filling in the gaps and the details, the information we know. He's engaging the community in a great way. And he's not just, like, talking to, like, the big name streamers and whatnot. Like, some of the really, really important questions with really, really important drops of information were in response to people with, like, 20 followers. So that shows that, like, this guy's literally, like, reading, like, a lot of what's being sent to him. And there has to be a lot of stuff being sent to him. So, like, huge props on that front there. Like, tons of great information came out through him this week. Just don't right. let him carry the sword. Across in Crota's end. You know, I think it's interesting how much um, how much Bungie is leaning on Josh Hamrick because you know he was really important to the to the to the gunplay before he left. He went and worked at Bethesda for a while, and then he came back, and he's already you know been very. Uh, I don't know. I almost feel like Bungie sent him to Bethesda, maybe not to like spy or anything, but just, you know, keep some eyes over there. You know, like like they've they've really had Hamrick uh, doing a lot. Um, Dude, Jez. I, I hope Bethesda is like, we're going to we're going to tell you the secret how to make an actual open world as long as you can loan us Josh Hamrick to fix our guns. <laughs> OK, that is what I, I'm I'm comfortable with. That. that makes a lot of sense, you know. But yeah, so shout sense. out to him and shout out to whoever uh, let him out of his cage because somebody let him out of his cage over there. 
right? He was instructed to to deal with the with the masses. Uh, Jez, my shout out this week goes to Wendy. You probably would see her around in most Twitch streams. Named a girl named Wendy. Her birthday is this Saturday, so wish her a back birthday then. Happy birthday, Wendy. Uh, okay, happy my birthday. Shout out, my shout out goes to Gray uh, because I, you know, I remember when Connie joined the when Connie joined the group. Uh, Connor joined the group, and uh, and I and I said to him, I was like, well, who is this? Uh, who's this Connor? Uh, and so he told me, and you know, I just. I just knew, you know, Gray's not Gray's not just inviting any old meth head in off the street, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so, so Gray, thank you for that. Thank you for uh, keeping your eyes and ears open and and providing this group with with so much talent. Because really, uh, Connor, your your skills are are amazing, and I feel like it's related to your to your calmness. You know, like you are able to just like like do you get tilted? Man, I should have asked you this when the podcast was still going. Uh, we'll save that for another episode. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, that'll remain a secret. <laughs> You're right. I just, I just was like, Superman, do you have an alter ego or what? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and that wraps up episode 126. We would like to thank everyone listening for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any suggestions for topics to be discussed on the show or have any comments on something that has already been covered, please leave them in the comments below or send them to feedback at guardian1.net and we will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.